Welcome to the Wellness as a Way of Life podcast, your one-stop, all-encompassing source of wellness, knowledge, wisdom, inspiration, and motivation. Here we teach you why not all wellness trends are for you, how to figure out which ones are, how to best adapt them for your personal wellness toolbox, and how ultimately to integrate your wellness practices so fully that they become to feel like brushing your teeth a foundational part of who you are and not a check mark on your to-do list. This week on the podcast, we are diving into rejection as redirection with Caitlin Spears. She is a certified health and nutrition coach, fitness coach, and founder of Complete by Caitlin. At 18, she was rejected from the show America's Next Top Model, which affected her relationship with her body and food. She went on to have a successful modeling career and became a certified health and nutrition coach. Caitlin's mission is to empower individuals to feel healthy and confident, feeling, focusing on physical well-being and self-realization. She holds certifications from IIN, Institute of Integrated Nutrition, Precision Nutrition, and ACE Fitness. So excited to have her on the podcast. Let's dive in. Welcome, Caitlin. I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. It's an honor. I'm so curious to ask you about your history with modeling and America's Top Model and how you've come to this much more holistic, juicy place in your life. So tell us first about your morning. What is has your morning entailed so far? Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much for having me on, first of all. Um, it is, what, one thirty here in Miami. So I had a jam-packed morning. It's Monday, so I always cram all my clients into Mondays. Woke up at around six. Uh, we actually walked to play tennis this morning. Then I worked out. Then I had breakfast. And then I changed and I headed to my workspace where I currently am. And I've been working for the past several hours. And yeah, just kind of working with my clients one on one, doing a lot of catch up from the weekend, emails, responses, just living that entrepreneur dream. Amazing. So I know now you're feeling like a a very powerful woman, healthy, like vibrant. You've got all these things going on, this massive community and following. But can you take us a little bit further back to where maybe you just weren't feeling quite the same way, whatever sort of catalyst moment you want to take us back to? Yeah, I guess we can go all the way back to 10 years ago when I was 18. I had freshly graduated high school, had um, actually done my first pageant that I, ever in my adult life, and I did it for a scholarship. And that pageant actually ended up getting me signed into a modeling contract. And then from that experience, I got exposed to some of the producers and casting directors for America's Next Top Model out in L.A., And they reached out and so began the process of me doing jumping through hoops for months and months and months, thinking that I was about to go on this show that was going to change my life and make all my dreams come true. And little did I know, three months later, they would, with one email, basically crush all of my dreams and tell me that I was not good enough. And therein lied the next three years of my life, uh, depression, anxiety, misery, um, definitely not where I'm at right now. So looking back on it, it is kind of crazy that one email had such an effect on my life. One person's thoughts on one TV show, um, them basically telling me that, you know, I needed to work on my body was the email that response that I got. And at 18, I don't think you really even know how to receive that. I don't even know if at 28, I would know how to receive that, but it, it definitely took me down a rabbit hole for a long time that now I wouldn't say I'm happy I experienced because I mean, who would wish that upon anyone, but I definitely think that everything I went through brought me where I'm at. And now I'm able to help people who are going through similar situations and, or feel that kind of way. 
Yeah. And when previous to that whole um, series, series of events, was it a childhood dream of yours to go down that road or was it sort of more happenstance and you created that dream as you went? You know, I think it was a little of both. I was definitely always a dreamer. You know, I, I loved America's Next Top Model. I watched every season. I would put on, like, my mom's heels and walk down our hallways because we had a really long house. So I would just, like, strut and act like the hallway was my runway. So I think it was a dream of mine. But, you know, I don't know. I grew up on a cow farm in a town of 2,500 people in the middle of Oklahoma, so Walmart was 45 minutes away. I just want to give everyone like a geographical <laughs> reference of where I lived. So it, in my mind, it was a dream, but it didn't seem like something that would land on my doorstep at 18 years old. It wasn't like I was out there searching for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when it happened, it felt like the universe divine intervention was like playing in my favor. And then it was like, just kidding. We're taking it all away from you. Yeah. So how, when do you feel like you picked up the thread of sort of redirection and started um, taking a more empowered narrative from that really hard lesson? I think it was three years later. I think I was somewhere between 21 and 22. I had really, I had gone to college. I hated it. I hated every minute of it. I graduated high school with honors. And in college, I was literally failing classes because I didn't want to go. It was just, it wasn't supposed to be where, I wasn't supposed to be there. But that was what everyone around me told me that I had to do. You know, if you're, if you can't do this, then you have to go to college, you have to get a degree, like, you've got to do something with your life. And so I think I was just so down on myself after someone told me that I wasn't good enough. I didn't feel confident enough to leave college and go out on my own and do something else. So I just kind of stuck with the straight and narrow. But about three years in, after, you know, really, I switched colleges three times. I left, went back, had modeled a little bit in between. I was depressed. I was anxious. I was drinking a lot. I was around a lot of people that did not serve me. And I I didn't even recognize myself anymore, truly. It was like I was hiding from myself and trying to morph into someone that wasn't me to fit in with people that were around me. And I got to this point, I just remember one day waking up and thinking, oh, I'm going to go, you know, I feel awful today. And I, I told myself, I'm like, you have two choices today. You either stay here where you've been for the past three years, miserable, depressed, anxious, and not doing anything with your life. Or you take one action, one action today that has the potential to change your life tomorrow and the next day and the years ahead. And I think I just reached a point where I said enough was enough. And I I stopped being the victim. I started showing up for myself again. I stopped letting what other people thought about me or thought I needed to do control my life. And day by day by day, I rebuilt myself up. Yeah. So were there any key mentors or maybe podcast books at the time way back when that for you, it was like, you know, singing uh, counter status quo narrative that really resonated with you? The first thing I remember when I was getting back on my journey was back in the day, Kayla's Fitness, who now she's the owner of like the Sweat app. She was kind of one of the original fitness influencers before influencing was even a thing. But she sold this book that you could print out, this like PDF book, and it was like super thick, But her workouts and her way of teaching was so fun. It didn't feel like it was stressful or like, oh, you hate your body. So you're working out because you hate your body. Or it felt like she started to teach me how to love my body again, how to move my body in the correct way and how to show up for myself. I saw this strong, independent woman out there creating this brand and this dream and teaching women like myself that felt like I was at the very bottom, how to get up, how to move your body, how to feel better. And I'll never forget that little, that PDF book that I printed out and put it in a, in a three ring folder. And I like every day would read a different part and start a different workout. And it was just fun and inspiring. And I really looked up to her. Hmm, I love that. 
Can you take us back for a second? Because you did mention that you were drinking a lot. What what did you mean? Like, what does that look like for you? And is that just because you were hanging around people that solved not feeling their best with alcohol or or what was the situation there? You know, I think I could blame everybody else. You know, I could be the victim, but it was me. It, it was me choosing to be around people that that was where they were at in their life. It was me being really, really sad about where I was at in my life. It was me being depressed and anxious. I dealt with a lot of like, Issues with my family, issues from childhood, issues with, you know, body dysmorphia and the modeling industry. And I let, instead of dealing with it, I just drank. Instead Mm. of dealing with what was at hand every single day and coping with it correctly, I coped through alcohol. And that's just, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody because there's, there's so much regret that comes from that. I don't take it back because again, I would never take back anything because I think we have to go through everything in our life. But there was a lot of regret built into those moments. Yeah, I can really relate. I mean, I was a high functioning alcoholic for probably two decades. I'm five years sober now. Um, But it was really like really a conscious shift. Uh, You know, in my 20s and 30s, I was looking to numb. And then now my priority is clarity. So what are you doing for yourself on the day to day to sort of foster clarity and, you know, being in a better mood, being less anxious, all these things that um, I know you do probably without thinking at this point. Yeah, I think it starts with getting a good night's sleep because it's really, really hard to function at the level you want to or need to function at every single day if you're not getting quality sleep. So for me, it really starts with like winding down at night properly, disconnecting from social media, disconnecting from stimulants, reading a book, taking a hot shower. It's like little things that you don't even think about your, your skincare routines, you know, your gratitude practice. I do um, three minutes of gratitude in, at night and three minutes of gratitude in the morning every single day, because gratitude really helps me to stay grounded in my day and to feel better. And it's something so simple. You don't need to take an hour out of your day. It's three minutes. Mm -hmm. And so building in those sustainable habits of gratitude and self-care and reading more over scrolling through social media, because all of those stimulants, as soon as you wake up and all of those stimulants right before you go to bed are leading us into a world of people that don't feel good. They don't feel good because they're not sleeping good. They're stressed. They're comparing themselves all the time. So I think my number one recommendation for all of my clients that I work with is decompressing from stimulants a little bit. Yeah, you're preaching to the choir. I totally agree. Uh, What's your take these days on exercise? You know, I'm guessing that you encourage women to work out because they love their bodies, not because they're comparing to somebody else on social media or um, you know, maybe a dark, horrible email they got when they were 18. Yeah. I promote, um, movement as self-care versus something that you do to, you know, look a certain way. Instead, I want you to feel a certain way. I want you to feel good. I want you to get those good endorphins and I want you to look at workout, working out and moving your body as self-care for me. I mean, I don't do anything crazy three to five days a week, depending on my schedule, I usually do an at-home Pilates style workout. Like that is it. It's nothing crazy. Usually it's 15 to 35 minutes. It's very easy, very low impact. I use ankle weights and five or 10 pound weights that I have at my house. It's so simple. And, And what I promote with my clients is do what you love. Workouts and movements, they're going to come in seasons. If you're anything like me, I get bored. I switch it up. I'll do Pilates for six months and then I'm over that and then I go into hit workouts for six months. Like you don't have to stay with something for the rest of your life. You're allowed to change and you should change. You should, if you want to try dance, try dance. Like it doesn't have to look like you going to the gym every day for you to be taking care of yourself. Yes, totally agree all things that I say on a regular basis. Uh, this is awesome. Um, so I love that you kind of called out that it doesn't need to have the sort of intensity that some expert fitness people might insist. That, so I talk a lot about less is more, A, and B, you really need to make it your own, you know, and if you feel like you're in living this 
life full of rules, at some point you're going to rebel, right? It needs to ebb and flow to your point, like with your likes, your dislikes, the seasons, uh, and also like the seasons of life. Um, you know, I work with a diff- a lots of ranges of, of women, you know, you hit motherhood too, you know, hanging out with your kids at the park and chasing them around the park is <laughs> exercise, right? And so I really encourage women to look, I love that you said movement as well, you know, like it's, let's, some people have sort of a knee jerk reaction to the word exercise. And I think if we just bring more functional movement back into our day to day, it's so powerful. Um, and yeah, what else do you like to recommend in terms of, um, how to look at self-care maybe from a, a more bird's eye view that, you know, that might be counter counterculture in the, the wellness industry. You know, I don't, I think when we think of self-care, we think of these long drawn out routines that look so pretty because, you know, everybody does their self-care routine on social media now, but self-care is really just taking care of yourself. It's any and every form of taking care of yourself from fostering healthier relationships. Like you're talking about with your kids or your partner, like that is self-care in itself. Mm -hmm. whether it's waking up in the morning and having a cup of coffee sitting outside in the sunlight that is self-care all going on a walk midday that is self-care like self-care we've made it we've coined it to be this like idyllic thing that it's not self-care is just taking care of yourself and so I mean what I recommend to my clients is you know your mindset is self-care. Taking care of your mindset is self-care. Taking care of your, how you treat your body, the food you put into it, how you nourish it, that is self-care. The movement you do every day is self-care. Managing your stress through practices of meditation and gratitude. Taking care of your sleep, fostering a healthier sleep environment, that is also self-care. All of these things that you can do in small increments every day, that's your self-care routine. You don't have to have a 47-step skincare, self-care routine that you do every day. You just have to live your life and take care of yourself. Yeah, totally. I love that. Uh, I think it's so funny that we've had to sort of look at this thing that's essentially just taking care of yourself as this highly curated thing. So uh, I, you already kind of mentioned some buffering techniques with social media and our relationship with digital uh, the digital spaces. Are there anything else that you recommend to clients? I'm guessing a lot of your clients are more in your age category and probably have like maybe even a deeper relationship with social media. Uh, are there things that you recommend or things that you do personally to really sort of keep it compartmentalized or, you know, as healthy as possible, your relationship specifically to social media in terms of, um, you know, how it's impacting your vision of yourself and your relationship with yourself. Well, I think you just said it. I think it's making sure that we're taking care of ourselves first, because if we're not taking care of ourselves, our self-love, our mindset, how we look at ourselves, how we look at the world, we can't be happy because you're scrolling social media where it's everything's perfect. It, it's curated. We also have to remember that. We have to remember that social media is a very, very small percentage of someone's life. It's the happiest moments. It's the prettiest photos or the best videos. So it's just reminding everyone around me, myself included, my clients, that that's not real. That's not reality. Reality is 100% and you're getting 1% on social media. So it's it's changing the way that you, you think about things. It's changing how you show up for yourself every day, whether that's through um, positive self-talk techniques, you know, reframing your mindset if you have negative thoughts about yourself. As simple as just, you know, reframing that into a positive um, shift. Like those little changes over time are going to cause you to love yourself more. And in turn, you're going to not judge yourself or compare yourself as much as you did before. I think that's what a lot of my clients come in and get from me that they don't even realize they need. A lot of them come in thinking they want to lose weight or, you know, they have these ideas in their head of what they think they're going to get from the program. And every single one of one of my clients, when before they leave, they say, you know, I came in for what I thought I needed and I got what I actually needed, which was confidence. 
Mm-hmm. And it is, it's just simple mindset shifts and focusing on what's important and re and realizing that what you're seeing is not reality. Yeah, totally. And, you know, when you're taking care of yourself in terms of physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, uh, health and wellness, you, you have skin to deep confidence, which otherwise you wouldn't have, right? Yeah. How are you working with people? Tell us more about how, what your offers are, what are you doing these days, where you're hanging out and how people can connect with you. Absolutely. I do one-on-one coaching. I work with all my one-on-one clients for a minimum of three months, but I've had most of my clients for six, eight, nine months now. Love working with my one-on-one clients. And then I'm also really, really excited because I am launching my first ever live course So this course, I'm going to be live with everyone who joins for 12 weeks, doing 12 weeks of live Q&As to keep everybody on track. But basically, this course is going to teach everybody what my four-step method is that I teach all of my one-on-one clients. It's the Kate method, which stands for Connect, Approach, Integrate, and Transform. And it's just my four-step formula, my step-by-step guide to becoming a happier, healthier, and more confident version of yourself through holistic health. And I'm, I'm really, really excited to be able to reach more people through this group uh, course. And that's, that's it. I do one-on-one coaching and then, then the course, that's, that's how you can get me. And then I have right now a free, um, I just created a free guide. It's a beginner's guide to holistic health. So if you're listening and you're not really even sure what holistic health is or what that could mean for you or how you could start implementing that into like small actionable steps every day right now, you can download my free guide. It's available on my website as well as on my social media. And I'm Caitlin Shea Spears on all social media platforms and CaitlinSpears.com on the website. Amazing. So we'll direct everyone to all those links. Is there somewhere in particular that you spend the most time or that's the best place to DM you? Yeah, uh, Instagram is definitely the best place to connect with me. And if you just... DM or comment the word ready, you will instantly get access to my free guide as well as information about all my programs I I offer. Beautiful. I love the name of your method. That's brilliant and catchy and fun. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to following your journey. And it's such an honor to hear from you and to know that you're inspiring so many women in this, you know, next generation to be looking at themselves through a uh, yeah a lens of self-love more than all the other things that society tells us we should be focusing on, right? Yeah. Uh, for you, how is, is wellness or holistic health a way of life? You know, I think wellness and holistic health has changed my life. It's brought me from the darkest moment I could ever imagine or remember into this person that is confident and loves herself and shows up for herself. So if anyone out there is contemplating like starting a health journey or becoming healthier, just do it one day at a time, small baby steps, small actions. You're going to look back one day on that 10 year ago version of yourself and be so happy that you started. Yes, love that. Well, it's a perfect place to leave this off. So thank you so much, Caitlin, for being here and uh, we'll be in touch. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks again for listening. If you haven't already, I highly recommend that you listen to the episode I did with Professor Barbara San Roman. She and I are embarking on a new adventure everything leadership, self-leadership, and wellness. We are calling it Elevate and Lead. It is an eight-month, eight-session program, a strategic leadership development program for women to optimize their capacity, a comprehensive approach to elevating executive leadership in corporate spaces. Training and retaining high-quality female talent is paramount to the future success of any company. The impact is much greater than diversity and inclusion alone. The cost of high turnover of skilled women is an investment in not only time, momentum, strategy, expertise, and potential. We are doing this through 
eight micro learning experiences to help corporate women feel embodied and sustainable in their leadership capacity. I will suggest that you check out the website to get a breakdown of the eight sessions if this is resonating and we highly recommend that you skip the trial and error and embrace a transformative program that compresses time, accelerates growth and ensures the rise of a new era of leadership. Hey there, one last thing I wanted to share with you. If you're enjoying this podcast, it would mean so much to me if you could rate and review it on your favorite podcast platform. It really does help us grow the show and this being so important to me to get this message out to more women to help them optimize their wellness and ultimately their lives. This is my mission and I would greatly appreciate it if you could support the podcast by rating and reviewing. Thanks in advance. Have a good one.